Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a common test that we see being used across the world is one called a calcium score. There is a misconception that this might be a good test to evaluate people who have chest pain. Well, that's not the case. So let's find out all about what a calcium score test is and what it may be used for. Calcium is a nutrient that is the most abundant mineral in our body and we have almost 99% of our calcium is stored in bones and teeth. Now when we look at this material and we know when we take an x-ray of bones it appears as a white material. Well that is exactly what we're looking for when we do a scan of the calcium around the arteries of the heart. And it's an x-ray test that provides a very clear picture of the heart to help detect and measure calcium deposits in the plaque or in the fatty deposits around the arteries. Now we've talked previously about plaque, but plaque is a fatty material that builds up in the walls of the arteries of the heart. And there are several risk factors that we've talked about, namely diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking, a high blood cholesterol, genetic factors, there might be a family history of heart disease, say in first degree relatives, often less than 60 years of age, that may put you at risk. But we know that this plaque is made up of various materials, and that includes fats, cholesterol, calcium, and other substances that are often found in the blood. And this plaque develops rather gradually and very slowly, and it can develop before any signs or symptoms of actually disease being detected. These deposits can restrict the flow of oxygen-rich blood to the muscle of the heart and can eventually lead to symptoms. And those symptoms might be angina, the chest pain, pressure when you're walking or exercising, or even more worryingly, the risk of a heart attack when a little bit of this cholesterol breaks off, causing clot to build up in the artery and causing a heart attack. So a calcium score may be done to get a better understanding of your risk of heart disease in the future and what strategies or interventions may be useful to help reduce your risk before you build up or develop symptoms. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a misconception that this scan is a useful test to do when somebody has chest pain. That is not the case. If you have chest pain, the calcium score is not the test to do. So the scan itself can help guide us in terms of what is the most appropriate strategy to help address your risk factors and how aggressive we need to be depending on how high this score is. So the, this calcium score uses x-ray. So it is an x-ray and obviously there is some small exposure to radiation. And this amount is generally considered very safe. It's about the same amount of radiation that you may naturally be experiencing over a one year period. The calcium score is very simple to perform and you'll have a couple of dots placed on your chest called electrodes to monitor the, the heart and the ECG. And then you'll lay flat on uh, an examination uh, table that is positioned within a CT or computer tomography machine. It's an x-ray machine. And that whilst you lie on your, on your back, the CT tube takes a scan around the body to look at whether you have this calcium deposited around the arteries of the heart. You may be asked to take a breath in and hold your breath for a few seconds as the picture is taken. And after that, normally takes about 10 minutes. There's no injections necessary. And uh, you're often uh, you know, allowed to, to go home pretty soon after this. Now, after the procedure, there's no special precautions that you need to have. You can travel home, drive yourself, continue and resume your normal activities. So the calcium score comes up with a value. It's a number. Agustin score is the type of score that we look for, but essentially it's a number that reflects the total area of calcium deposits around the 
arteries of the heart, and the density of the calcium. Now, when we have a calcium score of zero, well, that means that there is no calcium that has been detected around the arteries. And that suggests a very low chance of developing you know, a heart complication in the future. But as the calcium score increases, well, then the score potentially also increases of the likelihood of having plaque deposits and then those plaques causing complications in the future. A calcium score of zero, as I said, means no calcium. And then we have sort of score from one to, to 100, where, you know, it's still relatively low, depending on, I guess, your age and your risk factors. But once we start getting, you know, more than 100, we start getting into the moderate range. And then, you know, there are cases where we have people who have several hundreds, or if not thousands, in terms of the calcium score. So it's not to be alarmed about. That's the key. Identifying this score helps us, helps us to reduce your risk, no matter how high this calcium score is. And it's only one type of test and one factor that we consider. So again, it's all very individualized based on your total risk. We look at all aspects of your cardiac and heart health, looking at blood pressure, looking at what your cholesterol is, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, things like triglycerides, and there are some various other types of cholesterol that we can look at, looking at your blood sugars, looking at whether you are smoking, and your lifestyle in general. So these are all the key factors that can help us identify what is the best strategy determined by your score. Now, the test is useful, but it's, as I said, only one part of the whole jigsaw puzzle. If it's zero, then the risks are very low. Now, it's not to say the risks are completely no risk or zero risk of having a heart attack in the future, because it's not only calcium that builds up in the walls of the arteries to cause blockages, but it can be this soft, fatty material. And that may not be obvious or demonstrated on the calcium test. And that's often called soft plaque. That can also be a risk for developing complications. But again, when the calcium score is low, the risks are low, and then we are likely or less likely to recommend provide preventative strategies such as using things like aspirin or statins. Now again, that's a very, very common question that I get asked. Well, do I need to be on a statin? And again, that's all very individualized based on how old you are and your individual risks of developing complications in the future. But again, I am more comfortable in recommending that we can monitor and partake in lifestyle changes, dietary changes, if the calcium score is very low in patients who might have a few heart risks. If, however, the scan is high, then there's no doubt the evidence has shown that there is a higher risk of developing complications. And in those cases, well, then we are more aggressive at trying to lower your risk, controlling things like blood pressure, your sugar, stopping smoking. But also there may be a benefit in using things like a little bit of low dose aspirin or even commencing treatment to help lower the cholesterol levels in the blood. And again, statins being only one class of therapy that has shown a benefit in reducing future complications in those who have raised calcium scores. Now, the calcium test, as I said, is not a test to be done in patients who have symptoms. If you have symptoms, then there are other tests that need to be done. And those symptoms might be chest pain, shortness of breath, when you exert yourself, tiredness, lethargy. And again, it's all considered amongst your other risk factors. But in those situations, there might be appropriate use of things like stress tests or a CT angiogram. And that's, again, a x-ray test like the calcium score, but involves the injection of dye that actually looks at inside the arteries to pick any particular blockages that you might have or an invasive coronary angiogram that most often we do from the wrist nowadays with a catheter up to the heart and injecting dye to visualize exactly what's going on. So again, if you have symptoms, the calcium score is not appropriate 
and not an appropriate test. So again, hope you found this useful. The calcium test is a commonly performed test. We just have to know how to interpret it. Again, it's easy to order these tests, but the key is to be able to interpret it based on the individual person, your individual risks, and how we might be able to then, based on that score, help reduce the risk of developing a complication in the future. Until the next video, bye for now.